Hey, so in this video, I want to open up the floor to a discussion on how Ty Dolla Sign almost had his first classic album. Now, when I first heard Ty, my friend Gab, in first year of university, he showed me Beach House 2 and 1, and immediately I was drawn towards his unique sounding voice, his level of songwriting. Initially, it kind of reminded me of R. Kelly, the way in which he would narrate things, but then the more I listened to him, it kind of reminded me more of Nate Dogg, in a way. The narrative elements, the unnecessary misogyny, at times yeah immediately i was hooked so after beach house one and two i started paying attention to more of his lucy's his subsequent mixtapes and then he dropped beach house ep and this is around the time when the ball started rolling for his career i mean before this ep dropped paranoid was really fucking up the airwaves it was doing numbers and then the weekend dropped the orna remix and the timing of that couldn't have been more perfect at this point ty is easily one of the biggest names in r&b well he was definitely one of the biggest newer acts i mean at this point all he could really do was Release his debut. I think he did drop Drop That Kitty with Charlie XCX and Tanache searching for a hit post Paranoid. And that didn't really do anything. They went on anyways and they just decided to drop Free TC. I think Blase came out beforehand, I'm pretty sure, but they dropped Free TC afterwards. And this was one of my favorite albums to have dropped that year when it did. Tracks one through eight was damn near perfect. And the sequencing of those tracks was just so smooth. I mean, we got some incredible albums, especially in hip hop, that were just a masterclass on how to craft an album. And tracks one through eight were that for me. The thing is, if Ty had stopped his album at track eight, he would have had a classic album. Now, before I get into why, I just want to explore the repercussions of this being the case. I feel like the narrative of Ty's career over the last few years has been that he shows out during features and he does an incredible, amazing, legendary job on them, but he can't craft an album to save his life. I feel like as a result, Ty released featuring Ty Dolla Sign, trying to flip that narrative in a way, but as a result, we kind of got a disjointed project that tried to explore way too many sounds and cramp it all into an album. The thing with featuring Ty Dolla Sign is I understand the sentiment, but when you have that many features, as a result, you're going to get a lot of different sounds and it's going to be a challenge to sequence everything together. The way in which Ty was able to incorporate skits and sequence all of these different sounds was just masterful. However, I couldn't help escape the fact that that album still kind of sounds like it's a little bit all over the place. But imagine this ability to sequence and to incorporate skits and to compose, but done in a hyper-focused way. As a result, you get tracks one through eight of Free TC. I mean... It's disappointing. His debut was supposed to be this magnum opus. He had all these orchestral arrangements, live instruments, along with legendary features. Yet, I felt like all of this was a bit hampered by the second half of this project. It's very clear that after Miracle slash wherever, he kind of just shoves in a bunch of what do you call these hit chasers? I would probably categorize them as we kind of just get when I see a blase only right, bring it out of me one after the other. And it just, it ruins the feel and the ambiance of this classic fucking project. And it's so disappointing. Now imagine if free TC had gotten the critical acclaim 
that it should have deserved. I think Ty would have definitely been more free in terms of his creative process because following this, I felt like he was trying to rectify his wrongs in a way. I remember hearing certain songs on campaign. It almost felt like to me a rehash of some of the highlights on Free TC. And I think for the rest of his career, he just tried to chase that. As a Ty Dolla Sign fan, I don't want to see him rehashing certain moments or trying to take down a narrative. I just want him to progress artistically, progress in the way he orchestrates projects, I want to see all of that, and I feel like him chasing this dragon in a way is hampering his potential. I just want to see Ty happy. I'm sure he's happy. I mean, he's he's goddamn rich at this point. I think he's engaged, you know? But anyways, I come back to this project every year, multiple times, but I just hate how I have to stop after track eight. It makes me want to rearrange this whole thing. Although I do hate Gar Down and Kanye's verse on it, I feel like that at least has a place on this project. And you could maybe argue that after Miracle, you could place Gar Down and Actress and then Finale. Although my preferred track list would probably just remove every song after track eight until Finale. It's... It's, it's just a shame. Horses in the stable, Miracle slash wherever, just give me the most goosebumps out of any Ty Dolla Sign track that I've listened to. And also another thing, right? It's like we get the brilliance of Horses in the Stable and then afterwards we get Noya. That transition is just insane and I could just go on about it. So I kind of wanted to bring this topic to your guys' attention. What do you guys think? It personally hurts me as a Ty Dolla Sign fan because featuring Ty Dolla Sign was a clear indication that he does hear criticisms of how people just call him a feature artist and people don't really fuck with his albums like that. But if he was able to execute free tc in the way that i know that he could have executed it i really do think that ty dollar would have had a classic on his hands it's almost like having a nba championship after that it doesn't really matter and he could do whatever he wants in his career it's like one of those check boxes and i feel like ty dollar has checked off everything else except for a classic album. With that being said, I do think that he has a capacity of creating one. I just think that he needs to step away from chasing contemporary hits a little bit and go back to orchestral elements and live instrumentation again. Ty definitely floats all over trap instrumentals, but his musicality is just so insane. And we can see that through his NPR Tiny Desk performances. Ty is definitely the mastermind behind those. So taking all that into consideration, I know that he has that in him. I think he just needs to bring it all back to the basics and execute. So what does everybody think? Can Ty create a classic album anytime soon? Or will he be cursed for the rest of his career? Let me know in the comment section. And yeah, subscribe to the channel if you like the video. Hit the thumbs up button. And see you all very soon. Oh, also, I started a new podcast. It's called, we already named it podcast, where me and my friend Leandra talk about basketball, music, politics, culture. The proposition here is that basketball is the anchoring of all of these interests. If you're curious, check out the link and I'll see everybody very soon. All right, take care.